today. I'm here with a uh, special guest, Victor Pross. Victor Pross is a, a, a libertarian artist. He is also the second sexiest man on YouTube. How are you doing today? Uh, very good. Second, huh? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I beat you. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you, you just had a movie recently come out, right? Pop Goes the Culture. Oh, no, it's far from coming out yet. What we're looking at next year. No, it has, oh, uh, is that the impression you got? No, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a labor of love, believe me. This is uh, taking quite a bit of time, a bit of organizing and um, so forth. But, uh, yeah, Pop Goes the Culture, we, we are looking at next year. Very, very nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess my first question or topic um, is, I've, you know, to me, um, freedom is really about uh, humility. It's about saying, I don't know what's better for other people. And when people say to me, well, wh uh, how is this going to look in an anarchist society? Or what, you know, how is this going to look in an anarchist society? Uh, my response, which I guess a lot of people don't like, is I can't predict the future. And that's the whole point. And, and central planning fails. That's the whole point of a free market system. I don't know. You let different people compete with their own ideas, and uh, you see who are, who is left uh, profiting and who is not. The market process decides. I I can't predict the future, um, and so it sort of frustrates me when I see uh, anarchists who are very uh, arrogant, who say, "Well, you know, I'm not going to be friends with people who uh, disagree with me." Um, I'm going to cut off contact with them. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I think that anarchism basically really seems to have like a uh, an inherent humility to it, uh, or, or that if you're an advocate of the uh, the free market, because instead of going around uh, thinking that some that you, let's say, as an inspired uh, leader or political a political leader or dictator or whatever or just as an armchair status has all these ideas about how what should be run and should be organized and this law should be passed, that law should be passed, whereas the anarchist is more of the political atheist and saying, look at I can't answer all these questions, I, I leave it, I bestow it to the uh, uh, to the free market, when the free market means in this case uh, the division of labor, of the work, of the interactions of hundreds and millions of people, you have the division of labor within uh, uh, intellectually and also physical labor, and it's the market that has uh, that we should be humble before and and go. It's astounding. It's not like it's a mystical entity. It's just made up of concrete people, but millions of them, and that's what the division of labor is all is, is all about. And you're humble before that. You don't have all the answers like a status. Uh, and now as to the second part, did you want to dive into that? Like this this sure. arrogance of. Uh, yeah, of, of the uh, the family members and opening up the uh, the trap door shoot or whatever, and like uh, <laughs> the first time ever anybody talks about uh, a law or that the uh, there should be public schooling or whatever. Well, excuse me, did you say public schooling? Well, I'm dropping you from my life like a piece of shit. No, it doesn't. It's not exactly like that. Um, forget about political labels. You know, if if you have a family member or a friend that announces themselves as a Democrat or or a Republican, or a conservative, or a liberal, or whatever. Sometimes the people don't even know what these words means. They they vote the way that their parents have uh, you know raised them to be. You know, there's just that's that's the mindset of a lot of people is they they don't even know what the terms really mean and what they refer to. They might feel strongly on this issue or that issue and not even know that it falls into their blue shirt team uh, uh, view. You know, whether it be civil liberties or be uh, censorship or abortion or whatever. But uh, forget about uh, your family members or friends. Their uh, their political stripes, the blue shirt, uh, the donkey ass, or versus the uh, the elephant. It doesn't matter. What you need to do is get get forget about politics and go right to the heart of their ethics. Okay, so somebody might very well announce themselves as a liberal because they feel that uh, like whatever a woman should have greater domain over her body. Uh, it might really be coming from a good. Uh, spot in their heart, but people though, when they openly announce, when they know the issues that, if they know that the that the government is uh, the institutionalization of force, and they're okay with that, then I cannot feel uh, towards that person as I could have otherwise. I just can't. I can't. 
if I once I know their their, their values are a little bit more explicit than the uh, than the um, uh, the the political labels that people just pin on themselves without necessarily really knowing what they're what it's all about. There's some people who are a little bit more savvy, and those are the people that I, I abstain from. And I and I think that that's just just comes down to uh, a matter of ethics and forget about political labels. Does that make sense? You know what I'm what I'm leading to? Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I you know I mean for me, look, I think that most you know most people at least that I've come across in contact with um, believe in minimizing harm. And they believe that the problem with the non-aggression principle is that there's no sense of degrees. That it's just don't commit any harm. And so that an analogy they might make is, you know, if I have to steal one apple to save someone's life, that according to the non-aggression principle, I can't. So, but why is that ethical? I'm doing a little harm, uh, stealing, let's say, a dollar worth of something, in order to feed someone else, so it, it's 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 a matter of uh, degrees for me. So um, when I apply this to the government, I'm talking, I'm thinking as a status. I'm not speaking for me, but you know, yeah. if, I, if I apply this to the, it's important to put yourself in their mindset. Uh, if I apply yeah. this to the government, I'm aware that the government commits uh, some violence, but um, in its absence, I believe that there will be more violence. And, um, you know, yes, I am aware that the government uh, may steal money from a millionaire in order to uh, give money to a, a poor person, but um, the gain from the poor person is a matter of starving and not, and the millionaire could still have his yacht, he could still have a nice life, so to me it's just about minimizing harm. Where you, you don't want to do any aggression whatsoever, and you, you ignore the sense of degree. So what would, what would your response be to that, or people who have that outlook, which I think is a common outlook? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, either you apply a principle or you don't. There's the non-aggression principle, and uh, you apply that or you don't. There's no middle ground between the initiation of force and uh, cooperating peacefully, interacting with people in a voluntary means. There's no middle ground. There's just like... Uh, you like to think that maybe there's some kind of like uh, floating uh, agnosticism, but when it comes to let's say uh, supernatural religion, either God exists or He doesn't. There's no middle ground. You can take an epistemological middle ground. You can't take a, a, metaph a metaphysical middle ground. God exists or He doesn't. Epistemolo epistemology, yeah, you go the middle of the road if you want. It doesn't mean anything. Now either you apply a principle or you don't. Now, in the case of like the uh, the the ethical lifeboat to conundrums that's always tossed to uh, to designed in such a way, in a sophist manner to uh, to discredit anarchism, uh, they posit it in such a way as if there was nothing else you could possibly do. Either you're going to steal that apple, or you're going to die. Yeah, there's there's no. Uh, asking for charity, there's no uh, going to a family member or going to a friend or going to uh, 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 or, or finding out some other means to get the apple or, or to, to to feed yourself. Uh, like there's a, the, it's just you know it's just this one or the other, and it's a false economy. Uh, now in terms of the uh, the government though, with the same rationale being applied to the government of like just to steal you know just to steal a little bit from the rich guy. You know, it's, it's overall, it's for the common good, so, you know, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet, you know, so, you know, we have to crack a few skulls for the common good, and, you know, individuals become dispensable in that way. It is for a greater good. Well, that same mentality, just to, that's why the state growed. You broke with principle, and the next thing that you know that, well, uh, the government is just going to serve the purpose of protecting individual rights. So the next thing that you know, well, now we have to make sure that we don't have a stupid population. So we'll take over the educational system. Well, you know what? Just in case somebody falls through the cracks, we'll have the welfare state. And then it grows and it grows and it grows. And anyway, it, there's no such thing as a government that just, that just uh, you know, attacks the rich guy for the poor guy. The, the government is a parasite on the on the population host period okay everybody is the sucker and has a, a gun to the temple it's not just to the rich people for the sake of the poor the government is a parasite on the entire population 
their productive energies, their time, their energy, their blood, their sweat, their toil, physical and intellectual. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, yeah, yeah and, and moral. I mean, uh, a regular thief typically leaves your brain and conscience intact, where the state wants to control uh, your, your thoughts and control uh, how you view right and wrong. So it's, it's yeah. and it wants conformity. So it, it is really the, the worst thief of all. Yeah, and do you, do you want to see the actual results of public education? Do you really want to see the results of public education? You have people who actually think still in 2014, still to this day, that the, the, the government overtook education to ensure that Johnny, God bless his rosy apple cheeks, uh, is able to tie his shoes and is able to add up one plus one equals two. Thank God that the government stepped in. No, no, it has not, nothing to do with the, the, the fact that what they were trying to do was uh, take control of the minds of the children who become citizens for the, uh, for the allegiance and the furtherance and the better interest of the state. It's it, it invested in its own pre pres uh, preservation that it's done this. And you know what? It's not, this is not an anarchist theory. This is something that can be validated by historical facts. All the intellectuals and the writers of those times were explicit in their intentions of what they wanted to do. It wasn't it wasn't garnished or anything like that. They the whole purpose was was to take the control of the mind of the citizen. Mm -hmm. And you do that through mm -hmm. patriotism and jingoism and all the national anthems and the star spangled banner and all the emotional theater. Uh, of, of course it's a rigged system. The entire system is rigged. It's it's a control game. Yeah, I, I agree. As I as uh, I, I like to say, the only people who could uh, support something like public education are people who probably went to public school. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, yeah, so, yeah, you know, uh, even thinking of, even trying to think of any alternatives. Like uh, some people are just astounded if I even uh, mentioned the you know homeschooling that, that uh, parents actually uh, taking responsibility for the education. And the intellectual furtherance of their own uh, children's minds—they are—they are expected morally and legally to take care of their children uh, physically, right? Why don't we have the same standard for them for their education? You know, why is it? Oh my, my God! Like that sounds just perfectly crackpotish. You know, with parents educating their own children. You know, and if this is such a horrific idea, uh, doesn't that just speak to their own edu public education? The parents, right? If they can't impart knowledge, uh, how does that bode? For the uh, for their own intellectual development, if it's horrific to even think that these parents should be educating their own children, what does that speak to them? Sure, I I agree, um, but you know I I think to be fair, um, anarchists are asking for a lot. If now we're not asking for a lot in terms of we're not demanding your money, we're not demanding all these laws, we're not asking for a lot in terms of do this, don't do that, but. Uh, from an intellectual standpoint, most people are habitual, and most people want to gravitate towards views where people will look at them and accept them. No one wants to be a, a person who has a view where people are going to say, ah -ha, you believe that? What are you, crazy? What are you, stupid? So people uh, don't want to... We're asking them to accept a philosophy where we know, uh, and they know that if they adapt it, people are going to call them names, they're going to make fun of them. It's going to affect their social life. And we're asking them to really change um, hundreds of years, thousands of years, uh, ways of doing things. And, you know, for a lot of people, they'll say, look, you know, you have this theory that uh, of anarchy, but uh, you're really asking to completely alter and change a, a system, an institution that's existed for thousands of years. If you want me to take the jump towards anarchy, it, uh, show me some empirical evidence that it, that it, that it won't result into all these things that I fear it will. Yeah. And so, what, what do you say to that? Well, yeah, dealing with the first part of uh, of your statement uh, with the uh, the whole idea of uh, the perpetual browbeating ridicule that uh, anarchists anarchists be can be subjected to from their immediate environment, family members and friends and uh, other people, I guess, too, um, is that, uh, you know, like, probably when I was a young man, like, how old are you, by the way? How old am I? Yeah. 28. Or do you want to say, am I asking too personal a question? 
I'm not a woman. I don't give a shit. I'm 28. Okay. Okay, 28. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, when I was 20, uh, you know, and even a little bit later on, you know, to have such, to hold such radical views, you know, you probably would have been, uh, and I guess I was in, in a lot of sense, uh, socially uh, isolated. You know, cut off, cut off from being able to communi communicate with most people. I did have a small uh, handful of uh, truly intimate friends, right? And that was good enough for me. I didn't want kind of like want a, a popularity, so I, I was always brazen with my with my point of view, and that was my way of selecting those type of people that I would want to be associated. So my primary concern was not so much, gee, do they like me, but rather, do I like them? So that was my standard, right? Uh, we don't need all types of people. You know those friend, those people who say that oh you can never have enough friends. Yeah, actually you can. You know it, it really. <laughs> you know you don't need to spread yourself that 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 thin. If you have a great bulk of so-called friends, you can really truly have no time or energy for a, a truly intimate relationships that takes time and interaction. So, but anyway, as to social uh, uh, socialized isolation, that's no longer true these days. Not with the advent of the internet. The uh, the internet is like uh, is akin to Marshall McLuhan's uh, global village, where uh, people who are live in uh, small villages or tribes or whatnot, you know, have form a bond. But now this is uh, expanded globally, where that we're even that we're able to have this conversation as an example of that. People who would not would have met otherwise at all, it had not become for the internet. Now that we know, we all know. That anarchy is rising, to use a Michael Shanklin video title. Uh, there's uh, there's pockets developing uh, all over the place, sprouting up like uh, like uh, flowers and the geraniums and the Garden of Eden. We're finding each other, and it's uh, it's a beautiful thing, you know. Like uh, it, it's uh, we don't even we didn't even realize our numbers. You know, I mean, comparatively speaking, of course, to the population, comparatively speaking, but the numbers are growing. Don't you agree? Yeah, I I agree, but um, even so, people people don't want a relationship via a computer. They want to meet you in a bar up close, you know, shake your hand, give you a hug, not talk to some guy hundreds of miles away. Yeah, well, when I first moved to uh, Vancouver, it didn't take very long to know uh, to uh, to meet my kind of people. I guess you could say, right? So the uh, I mean, I don't know where you live. I mean, it might might. There might be certain sections where there's not a great accessibility to other people of like mind, but in a major major metropolitan city like Vancouver, I guess it was wasn't too much of a problem. Do you find this like uh, pretty much of a, a problem in your environment? Um, in terms of anarchy, uh, there's a few. Um, um, I I like arguing with people, uh, so it's it's. It's not really that fun for me to hang out with people who agree with me. Maybe I'm a bit uh, <laughs> a masochistic, but I oh. like getting into debates and arguments. No, I no, like well, debate. actually, you might be more of a gadfly, right? Huh? You're kind of maybe you're more of a gadfly. Well, no, uh, I mean a gadfly. I sort of just sort of just is on the windowsill, right? I like, I mean, maybe. Um, but I sort of been, not sitting on the window. I mean, like somebody who likes to engage people and yeah. to shake them from their complacency, yes. challenge yeah. their views, yeah. unabashedly. I yeah. do that. Um, okay. I, I don't really like preaching to the choir. Um, even when I'm, if I'm talking to other anarchists, I'm going to say, okay, what can I say that they're going to disagree with? Because I don't, I don't want to have a conversation. We're each stroking each other's cock, and we're saying, "Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're so smart. Oh, you're so..." Uh, you know, I, people are narcissistic enough. I don't. I don't want to uh, tell them how great and right they are. How, what uh, What are What are some of the uh, grievances that you have with some anarchists on whatever issue? Uh, what, are there any clashes? From a, in terms of how some of them act, or in, from a philosophical issue? No, yeah, well, either both. Uh, well, from a philosophical issue, I'm pretty anarchist. Um, I would say the the issue that I probably disagree with most is probably on the abortion issue. Uh, I believe that I, you know, call myself pro-choice. I pro-life. Uh, I consider uh, uh, abortion uh, an act of violence. Uh, not the day after pill, but certainly if there's a beating heart 
or uh, brain waves. Uh, this is alive. You measure death based on a beating heart of brain waves, so it makes sense to measure life that way. And I understand it's in your body, but you don't have a right to hit your kid in your home, so why do you have a right to, to hit your kid in your womb? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we talked about that the very first time that we talked, or in the, the last video that we did, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, did you want me... Yeah, you got, yeah. I was I was wondering that. I was wondering if you wanted to cover what I think about that. Yeah. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pro life and uh, or pro choice. Yeah. Pro life. <laughs> pro choice. Which one are you, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's it's kind of like a slanted, uh, you know, views. These uh, they're they're political designations. I think a partis probably sprung from partisan politics. You know. You know, uh, choice probably more from the libertarian set, and life uh, from the Christian right. You know, <laughs> when does life begin? As soon as God fuses the body, the the infant or the embryo with the soul. Okay, now it's a human being; it has a soul. When does life begin? You know, that type of thing. Well, yeah, I, 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 certainly it isn't a, a very uh, tumultuous uh, subject. No, no, no doubt. Yeah, but. The way that I see it, though, and implying the non-aggression principle, is, is that the whole uh, potential and actual uh, continuum. You know, the mother, the mother is uh, is a host uh, to the baby that's completely and utterly uh, de dependent, right? And we're talking about the third uh, trimester, anyway. By the way, I mean, uh, there's a there's a, I don't know. You know, an embryo has the potential of becoming human being, but I think that the I think the science shows, if I'm correct, I could be, could be corrected on this, that they're not quite a human being yet, right? So to do anything other than the mother's wishes, uh, I don't use utilitarian arguments or, or consequentialist arguments. Well, that baby could be a Beethoven or a Einstein or a Charles Manson. We forget about all that stuff, right? Um, I think that the, the for the mother, who is the actual, to, to violate her will, uh, it seems to me pretty clear that we have it to that it's a, a violation of the non-aggressive principle. However, this is not to say that this whole pro-choice and pro-life. That's not to say that you know uh, pro-choice means that it doesn't mean like yeah, abort the baby. It means pro-choice. It means that the that the uh, expected mother, the pregnant woman, could very well decide to have the baby. That is a choice, and that would fall into also into the libertarian camp. Pro-choice. So this dichotomy of pro-life pro, uh, versus pro-choice, you know, it's just kind of like, the, oh, your pro-choice means pro-death. Well, no, it doesn't. It doesn't, man. It doesn't. It means pro-choice. Uh, <laughs> so this is the. So that's that. That's the issue of where where I stand on it. Sure. I do have to correct you though that uh, the Christian right is not pro-life. You can't be a warmonger and be pro-life. They support the death penalty. They support a war, you name it. We want to attack this country, that country. I thought it was completely ridiculous when Rick Santorum, who any war you can think of, he's going to support, accused Ron Paul of not being strongly pro-life. Yeah. You can't be well, over this... there and, and say you're pro-life. Well, yeah, it's well, a then... fetus, I'm pro-life. But once it's alive, send it and let it be blown up. Well, yeah, I mean, that that's just it. The, the, uh, if you're an embryo, you have a right to a life. You know, if you're a potential, you have a right to life. But if you're an actual, well, we can draft you into a war. We can blow your brains out if we disagree with you. Uh, you we, we can tax you up the ass. You know, like so, we can we can and the uh, the and we can snuff you out if we so decree uh, as a capital uh, punishment. You know, so we we have the right to snuff your life out. You know, as an actual, but we'll protect you when you're an when you're an embryo, when you're a potential. So that shows the hierarchy of their values. It's, it's rather inverted to me. Yeah, I agree. Look, I'm, I'm certainly not saying uh, for, for uh, any of the viewers are watching this that the government uh, should have a role in stopping abortion. We have enough laws and we have more than enough police. I don't want to expand the police power. So I'm not saying uh, uh, a government should prohibit abortion. I'm saying, you know, in a stateless society, in a, in a community of poly-centric uh, uh, law, um, it would be uh, uh, feasible to have uh, 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 someone uh, uh, say, you know, you, I'm the father, you aborted my kid, and I'm going to seek uh, reparations against you. 
because yeah. I just get to it. That's well, what I'm, yeah. I'm not saying incarcerate women. Uh, the right. state should incarcerate women who perform an abortion. That's not what no. I'm saying. Well, that, yeah, but see, that's that's exactly how the, a lot of these issues get unnecessarily heated because people philosophize midstream. They simply take these problems, these social ills, if you want to call them that, as a given, and and uh, they don't think that a uh, an ounce of uh, prevention is worth a ton of cure. Uh, the, the, why, if there, if there is a type of woman that is using uh, abortion as an expediency as a form of birth control, this is a severely damaged person. So you have to ask other questions. What is going on with the society where, uh, notwithstanding rape, of course, but where people are so indiscriminate and destructive and promiscuous or whatnot in their, in their sexual life that leads to consequences like this? You know, why aren't they more careful? Why aren't they more rational? So it comes down to the, edu the question of education and so many other things, too. Yeah, I agree. So that's probably my main deviant. Uh, I'm pre I'm pretty mainstream in other issues. You know, intellectual property is an oxymoron. Um, you know, what what are your thoughts on that? In IP. I want to do more of the foo stuff, but we'll we'll talk about this first, and then we'll continue. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, that's a uh, that's a that's a ricochet all over the place for sure. Yeah. Intellectual property rights. I find basically of all the things I can study some very technical rigorous uh, philosophy and which is like an incredibly boring dry read for other people uh, but uh, on this whole intellectual of, uh, of intellectual property rights and whatnot it's kind of like a boring subject to me to tell you the truth but I do like a few thoughts though this is that uh, somebody had once uh, asked me you know what my view would be as somebody um, um, uh, made posters of my art, attributed them to me, but uh, just uh, proceeded to uh, to sell them as he saw fit. So therefore, profiting off uh, reproductions of my art, right? So the argument goes is that it's a reproduction. I still have the original. Uh, if somebody actually ripped off my, my the actual painting, and uh, that would be theft. That would be a violation of the NAP. But I just simply made a, a, a reproduction. So therefore, that is not uh, any violation of the NAP. But we do live in a, in, a, in a society. I think that most people, whatever their political orientation, would be put off by this type of thing if somebody ripped off their music uh, and uh, their, their art and was selling it. You know, and they go, well, that's the nature of the beast. That's capitalism. That's competition. So hey, you, you got what you asked for. And that's all well and good. But uh, why not? But that doesn't mean that we can't protect ourselves against, against these things. You know, it's against the law. It's against it's it's against morality to steal somebody's bike, but it's just a good idea to lock it up. So you can protect your property this way, intellectual property, just as much as you can protect the physical property if you want to. You guy could put watermarks on my art. I can have them scanned at a resolution that where they can't be made into posters. Uh, there's all types of things that I can do. So that's just a few thoughts. I know it's a much more deep and complicated issue than that. Sure. So hardly an exhaustive statement. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm 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 an attention whore. Me personally, if I'd be flattered if someone uh, copied any of my work and distributed it, uh, I I encourage it. Go make money. So that's, yeah, that's but how, personal. But, well, it might be a different. It might be a different thing though. That if you were trying to make uh, money from it, and then you, that you fell in competition with your own art, though, you know that that might be the issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if that you know, if if you were trying to make money. And you're getting diminishing returns because there's competition out there selling what you created. No, that 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 that's the thing that that. Well, uh, if he attributes the, the art to you, you can be making more money because now more people hear hear of you, more people know who you are, and you can get more speaking gigs, and your art art will be worth more because you're you're w more well known. Yeah, well, this is just the, this is just the point, Daniel. This is that there's arguments that goes both for both so of uh, both sides. So there, I don't really think that I see myself as a, as a, as a pro-IP person, even though I would take measures to protect, protect myself and against uh, people uh, making money off of my art. doesn't mean that I have to be pro-intellectual uh, pro, uh, property rights on this whole issue. People have different ideas on, on this, and it's, and it's all well and good, you know. But when it comes to the, uh, to the actual NAP, there is no such thing as, well, I'm for the... Uh, 
I'm uh, I'm for the non-aggression principle, and but I like to punch somebody in the face, and I like being punched in the face. You know, we're all ag agreed on what we don't like. If it's against your will, it's against your will. And uh, but this is a different thing. This this falls into a whole different category. So, well, let, let's get back to uh, the main issue at hand. So, what what is your thoughts on people who uh, say, "Well, I'm not going to be friends, or I'm going to you know defu." Uh, to use a Molyneux phrase, from family members, not because they're being abusive, not because they beat me up, but because, you know, I've used the against me argument, uh, I've, I've tried to uh, 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 persuade them to anarchy, and um, they won't listen. I mean, do you, do you think that we should say, look, you know, this is our family, these are our friends, people are going to disagree, um, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe, maybe you're just not good at persuading them. Uh, you have to use better arguments. Or something. I mean, what what are your thoughts on the whole defuging? Yeah, yeah, but this 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 whole issue of um, of uh, remaining true to pure a lot to uh, ideological purity or something like that. I, I I think that that's appalling. You know, that just that just has that has such a religious flavor to it. You know, what you have to do is like for once, like I said before, forget about the political labels. You know, for just forget about them. They mean nothing. They mean absolutely nothing. What you want to do is get to the actual ethical roots of, of the person that you're dealing with. Is this a person that you can admire? Now just like in the free market where you have uh, the trading of uh, services and goods, you expect quality goods for what you're putting out. Whatever the, um, whatever the dollar value that you're laying down on something, you want it to, uh, comparable to what you're receiving and you expect that. You expect it to advantage it's a mutual cooperation for mutual benefit. The same goes for uh, relationships. What's what's the exchange? What's the currency in relationships? Values, esteem, emotion, positive affirmation, uh, companionship, shared values. Okay, if you do not have that with somebody else who's who goes not against the music taste, but when it comes right down to to their ethical orientations. Where are you? It's not just a case of should I or shouldn't I. You know, if you have fully accepted and integrated your value system, you can't have but help but have a certain emotional reactions to other people when it comes to fundamental ethical questions. And if they are somebody who are who's not, as Stefan well, would say, in a state of nature, because they've been all caught up in the indoctrination, you know, the whole cult culture that we live in. But once that they, they actually have heard you and know the arguments, okay, for them to to accept it any, any, any longer, once you know that they get the point, that they get the point, but they have that moral cowardice and they bail out or and they and they start attacking you, and we can see how some vicious and how demeaning and uh, uh, and belittling some of their act, their reactions can be. All this b shows b begins to bow to the type of person that that you're dealing with. You know, and if the first thing they want to do, instead of listening to you, they if they were a mature person, they would sit back and go, you know what, what you're saying is kind of like astounding to me, but let's talk about this. You, uh, I want to find out why you, you accept these kind of views. You know, you're 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 my brother, you're my mother, you're my other, whatever, right? Uh, you know, and I and I love you, and it's rather astounding what you're saying. I've never heard anything like this. Let's let's talk about it. No, what do you what do you get instead? <laughs> what do you get instead? I'm not speaking that this might not be you know true for everybody, right? I don't, but I'm just generally speaking, though. I've uh, I've, uh, I've experienced this myself. I'm, I know that there's been a lot of other people, but just to just to take as one example, somebody in my own family. I won't give any names or anything like that, but somebody in my own family. When I started uh, expressing my views on these type of subjects, you know, instead of really taking the time to understand me. I immediately got th thrown into the whole tinfoil uh, 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 crackpot uh, category. You know, I was somebody that an intervention was possible. You know, was was necessary, right? Then it just got to a point where I really began to explain myself. You know, I put it in crystal clear terms that was completely unambiguous, though. And all I got was further ridicule, demeaning, hostility. It it went from uh, being uh, from humorous jabs to, and we quickly switch up to hostility. It was just com com complete another rejection. 
these are the those are the people that are the uh, they're diminishing the relationship with the volunteers who is encountering these type of problems. You know, so it's not the it's not the anarchist uh, person who all immediately has some kind of like ideological knee knee jerk reaction. I know that that there are cases like that, but it's not just the case of where everybody just has this knee jerk reaction. I'm a, I'm in an anarchist ideologue, and if you don't uh, talk the talk and walk the walk with me, well, fuck you. You're out of my life. It doesn't go that way. It doesn't happen that way for the most part. Right. Well, you know, maybe, maybe I'm too sympathetic, but I, I think that the reason that a lot of these um, people react that way is because what you are telling them, uh, what I am telling them, is that what they believe and what they have fought for and what their values are, are evil. Right? If someone believes the state is great and I say the state is evil, they hear me saying to them, you support evil. So it's natural the response is going to be, screw you, or la la la, I don't want to hear it, or be very defensive because they don't hear you criticizing the state. They hear you criticizing something that I think is moral and ethical, uh, and so of course they're going to be very defensive. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for an initial reaction, yeah, you know, you could very well uh, expect that, you know. Uh, but then you then you have to ask. You can take yourself as a standard, though. You know, it's not just to say that that inevitably must be the reaction. It doesn't necessarily necessarily have to be that kind of reaction. You can take yourself as a model. You were somebody, as a lot of people who are of this uh, of this philosophical orientation, very curious. They might be astounded and intrigued by certain ideas, and they might have like rejected them and kind of like uh, been hostile and resistant to them. But a greater rash rationality prevailed within yourself or within the, the, these type of people, and they began to examine the ideas a little bit more. It was never an overnight revelation. It, maybe some cases there were, right? But for the most part, I take myself as a model that it probably took you know years and years of thinking these type of things before I you know I went from. Uh, uh, looking at myself, uh, you know, I, I was a whole minarchist uh, kind of guy. The government was necessary for the military defense against foreign aggression, was necessary for um, for the police, for uh, domestic criminals, uh, was necessary for uh, courts, for resolutions of and, uh, and breaches, breaches of contracts, etc., blah, 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 doesn't belong in the schools and things like that. You know, I can, say, I can very well just say that because I did believe that I was a small government guy, you know that I was a statist, right? Um, but it's how you hold these ideas, though. You know, like if, if if you're, it's not necessarily the conclusions that you come to. It's your methodology. Like, what kind of person are you that way ethically? And this does have ethical implications of how you take responsibility for the use of your own mind and coming to conclusions, right? So I I uh, I prize and value people who are curious and and are uh, intellectually uh, open. Who are explorative and who has a have a quest to know the truth, not deluded uh, self-told uh, fairy tales, but actually have a genuine uh, respect for the truth. And if they happen to be of a statist orientation, but they have that um, that mindset though, but they they just haven't arrived yet, that's quite different from the person who's la la la, shut you down, blocked you down. They those are damaged people spiritually in a certain way and they're gonna go to their graves being these nationalistic zombies that's who they are it's a choice that they made at a certain at a certain point even though that they've been inculcated in a culture of uh, of uh, mystical bullshit on all fronts statism and and the uh, pie in the sky God but at a certain point you really you, you gotta take you gotta take responsibility just at one point when you're a child you're completely and utterly dependent upon your parents but you reached a, you reach an age when you expect to uh, to be responsible for yourself physically I think the same responsibility also goes intellectually I, I would agree with that um, yeah. so wh what do you think uh, is there an approach for you that you think works best or that you think you know, uh, is best. I mean, uh, does sort of a, a, an acerbic, a harsh tone work best? Or, I mean, 
you think just saying like what 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 a strategy you, uh, works with you when you're talking to people? Yeah, well, I don't think I don't really think. I mean, I used to have like strategies, you know, like Stefan has all these strategies, the against me argument or or whatever. Yeah, you know, like they're 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 interesting, right? My my own way is just to really genuinely be myself, and if there's um, and if you're in a circle of people, whatever the occasion is, some social setting, and people are talking about more interesting things than the weather or sports, and they, they're dealing with the larger issues, I'll, I'll, I'll express my views unapologetically. It's just like, I don't set them up for some kind of like preamble. Well, you know, I have like a really different take than anybody here at this table would. Uh, no, I speak, I just, I'm just myself, right, and take it from there. Right, so uh, you, I, I get uh, all types of reactions. You know, people who are intrigued with what I have to say, and then you also get the people who are about to uh, bust a uh, blood vessel. All right, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't have any strategies or anything like that. I'm just honest. I'm just, yeah. uh, I'm just being myself, and actually, and what I, and speaking what I actually think. Yeah, I think that's the best approach. I, I think um, just saying, look, these are my thoughts. Um, and having it be a two-way street, you know, I'm a big fan of proselytizing, but proselytizing in terms of this is what I think is right, these are my arguments, I want to convince you, but I also want you to convince me. I want you to convince, whatever you believe, uh, religious, statism, whatever it is, may the best man win, uh, b best arguments win, uh, and, you know, that's to me uh, a conversation that I love. I, I don't want to just be, here's, believe my views. And I don't want to talk to someone else with that attitude. I want the attitude of we're each speaking our mind, we're each making arguments, and we're sharing it with each other. Yeah. Well, you know, like uh, the, the, this whole question of arrogance and narcissism and uh, uh, and cockiness or whatever. I mean, all types of people exhibit this. Whatever you know, volunteerist status, uh, zeitgeisters. Everybody. There are people that are like that. Yeah. You know, it's not just like all oh, those anarchists are so arrogant, but there's never a status to isn't equally arrogant in his own views too. I mean, come on. I mean, like let's you know forget about the, this arrogance talk or what, uh, whatever. It's just like uh, there's one thing that I just keep dead center in the core of my mind when I'm interacting with other people, and not in terms of arrogance and not arrogance. The one thing that I keep in mind is is I'm the person who's standing by the non-initiation of force. I kind of feel like I'm, I can't help but take uh, feel that I have the moral high ground there because I'm actually talking about not initiating uh, physical violence against people. I mean, I don't know, I just, I, I kind of like figure that's superior to that we should, we have to break a few eggs to, uh, to make an omelet. That once in a while we, we you, you have to be, pound people to a pulp, you have to put a gun to their head for the greater good, you have to imprison people for victimless crimes. I don't know. It's just like I can't, I can't help but feel that uh, that my views on that is is that I have the moral high ground. That I have a greater legitimacy. You know, uh, call it subjective. I don't know. You know, it's, <laughs> it's might be my little subjective view, right? But you know, I'm going with it. I'm going. Well, yeah. I'm going for it. I would I would agree. That's why I always think it's crazy when people. You know, there's a lot of projection. Uh, people say, well, you know, uh, anarchism is a cult. Well, cult is blind obedience to an authority. Saying, I'm going to follow the law, doesn't matter what the law is, I'm going to follow it, I'll be a yes man if I'm called on a jury, I'll kill strangers in a foreign land because the government tells me to, I'll arrest people for stupid shit. That's cult-like behavior. Um, you know, uh, people will say, oh, libertarians are selfish. Well, what's more selfish? Do what I think is right, or I'll beat the crap out of you. Or someone says, um, "This is these are just my arguments and these are my views, but I'm not going to force you to adapt them." So uh, you know, these you know, so I I would agree. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like the just like with somebody in my in my family, you know, that, that they had this whole thing of like constantly uh, belittling me, you know, like as I was mentioning. And one of the things that was that uh, was uh, you know ridiculed was always open up to ridicules is like uh, oh non-aggression like it was like a religious precept right oh oh does that to, oh, can we uh, let's go to the store I'm gonna get some uh, get some ice cream for dessert or whatever hope that doesn't violate the non-aggression principle you know like if you don't have the ice cream now it was just a constant bombardment of belittlement right you know so the uh, 
uh, one day this family member was going on about how his uh, girlfriend, his her ex husband, was this uh, uh, slapper, right? This used to physical aggression against her. It was abusive person, right? So he was just talking about how he, what an asshole he was, that he would never do that. And that's where I got the shot. And it's just kind of like, oh, you're following that non-aggression cult thing, are you? You're not going to aggress against your, that your girlfriend. I see. Oh, oh, you're part of the cult, are you? Oh, the non-aggression against girlfriend cult, you know. So they're, 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 they're ridiculous clowns, you know. It, yeah. you, you just can't take these people seriously. How do you respect that? How do you respect these people? You know, I don't. You know? I, I, my facade is a nice smile, and deep down, it's just joy. <laughs> you know, you have to be fake in this world. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and, and and it's and it's really it, it's really sickening. It it just goes to show just how much that they have erected the the state, the government, as a god. You know, like this very same person. You know that when they there was some news going on. I can't, um, uh, I can't remember the woman's name, but there was a whole issue of where she neglected her baby, she and uh, po possibly even killed her child, and and um, she was like a 19-year-old uh, mother or whatever. And it just it was on the news every day. It's like about maybe a year or two years ago. But anyway, I I can't remember the. Uh, there's probably like a lot of cases like this. But anyway, like. This family member that I was talking about was going on like what a piece of shit that she is, is uh, ugly human being and uh, baby killer, and she should be uh, throwing her ha her ass thrown in jail and whatever. And you know I can understand those sentiments, of course, right? But then uh, whenever we got into an argument about when I was talking talking about American imperialism and uh, and uh, the uh, murderous American soldiers over there in Iraq, and it was even posting pictures of American soldiers holding back the heads of uh, children with blood all over them like a prized uh, a deer hunter kill or something like that. I posted these pictures because that was my way of making a point. Like if you're not going to listen to me, I mean here's the proof in the pudding. This is not Photoshop. This is not Memorex. Okay, this is real. Here it is. What do you think of that, right? So. Lo and behold, this person blows up, and they just lose their freaking shit over that. Instead of like, uh, but they're all anti-violence, you see. Don't forget about that, right? They're not pissed off about like the, this this grotesque murder taking place. That they're pissed off because it's being shown to them. It's being shown to them, right? So never mind like uh, challenging somebody's views with the implication that they've accepted evil the whole life. They're still accepting it when they see it in pictures. Never mind words. Yeah. You know, and if they don't, and, and, and as time moves along, if they don't sit and think about that, if they're the same kind of goddamn person that they were four years later from that event, and they're still cheering on some war, well, the next thing we got to do is go to Iran and whatever, and uh, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I have no patience or time for these kind of people. They're damaged goods. I, I think the one question that. Uh when I guess we'll end, but I, I think the one question that I like to say to uh, uh, people who advocate the state is, you know, the government's killed um, 260 million of its own citizens in the last hundred years. Uh, it incarcerates a numerous, a numerous amount of people, uh, the biggest mass murder on earth. Um, how many innocent people have to die? Uh, how many before you uh, reject this superstitious belief? A uh, hundred million? Well, then you must be an anarchist because the government's killed more than that. Two hundred million? Well, you must be an anarchist because the government's killed more than that. Give me a number. How many innocent blood sh people have to be die before you throw off the shackles of statism? That's yeah. the question you have to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, well, you're and you're even talking about like uh, private citizens. Uh, what what is the number stack up when it comes to? Uh, Government, the the ruling elite, to that of the population. Like, what is the the the, uh, the murder uh, stats on, on on either side? Is what you're saying, right? Is that the that's the argument? Uh, I mean, the argument basically is you view government as a protector. History has shown it's the complete opposite. Yeah. I mean, like Minarchists say, well, we need a government to protect us. Okay, we need a uh, we need a rapist to protect us from people who want to rape us. Right. Uh, I mean, saying government should protect us from murderers is like saying Ted Bundy should. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, of course, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it could be everything. Uh, everything that the government uh, depends upon uh, to uh, to survive is uh, breaks every uh, breaks every law and uh, moral commandment that it uh, is set to enforce. Uh, its whole it uh, relies entirely on the uh, the money supply, the uh, productive energies. It uh, murders as it sees fit. So it's everything that it's uh, set to protect you for. It has to sustain itself. It has to violate those very principles that they are set to uphold. Yeah, got it. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, cool. Well, um, any 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 other final thoughts? Words of wisdom? Yeah. No, not really. Just probably. I guess we can just uh, bow out now and say that uh, uh, regarding any kind of like self plugs or or whatnot, that uh, what we uh, opened up the conversation with with the movie. Which is called Pop Goes the Culture. If anybody wants to go to Facebook and Pop Goes the Culture, type in Pop Goes the Culture, the movie, go there and like the page. That's all. That's my plug. That's my final words of wisdom. All right. You heard it here, folks. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Good afternoon. Bye.